day lovely people um welcome to my channel ms sense i was so nervous and excited um to film the first episode that i realized i didn't even do a proper introduction so um i want to start this uh, video with um a proper introduction so my name is adina broxton gellin um informally i go by d my friends and my family they affectionately call me a uh, d for short so to keep things informal and um you know comfortable i'll be going by d for uh, most of the productions so that's my proper introduction i do apologize like i said i was so anxious and just ready to get things started that i just jumped right into the introduction video um, and for those of you who did not tune into the first video, please go back and um, check it out. But I will say that um, MS Sense is going to be um, a vlog about having an autoimmune uh, disease, specifically uh, multiple sclerosis, um, because that is what I am dealing with. And so that's what I can you know, most speak to. But I will be able to do some research and answer questions about other um, diseases as they are presented to me but primarily that's what the channel is going to be about so want to get things kicked off um and a disclaimer um my cognition is a little bit affected um by the disease so sometimes i have to stop and think about uh what i'm gonna say um just to make sure that my words are coming in clear um because it does affect my short-term memory and sometimes it affects my speech so if you see me stop and collect my thoughts in the video, um, it's not really a nerve thing. It's really just um, a symptom of the disease. And I appreciate you, you know, bearing with me and being understanding. So I also might look down in the video because my sweet girl, Bella, um, which is my three-year-old pit bull, um, I can't do anything without her being in the midst. So she will come in and out the room um, just to make sure I'm okay. So, um let's get this thing started so like I stated before um, I have multiple sclerosis I was diagnosed um, May 2019 um, I believe the official date was the 30th of May um, but I was going through um, a lot of rule out testing prior to that um, I became symptomatic in I want to say 2018 February of 2018 if I'm not mistaken um, I woke up and my left leg was numb at the time I did not know that this was a result of me having multiple sclerosis but this is kind of what jump-started um, my symptomology and later on I would be aware be made aware that this was part of the symptomology for uh, multiple sclerosis so I got my diagnosis May 2019. Um, a lot of stuff was going on <laughs> during that time. I also got married the same month, the beginning of that month. Um, that's my birthday month. So it was just a crazy time for me. I was like, what the heck is going on? I wasn't really feeling well. Um, but because I had kind of been made aware that most likely my diagnosis was gonna be multiple sclerosis, things were starting to you know, make sense for me and um i was trying to process all of the things that i was going through at that time but um for those who don't know and are wondering what is an autoimmune disorder so multiple sclerosis is one of many autoimmune diseases so an autoimmune disease is basically when um the body's cells well excuse me let me start over it's when the immune system attacks the body's healthy cells um, and specifically for uh, multiple sclerosis, um, my immune system attacks my nerve cells and um, it affects the myelin sheath, which is the protective covering around the nerves. And it causes uh, miscommunication or misfiring um, between uh, my spine and my brain. And so um, lots of different symptoms, like I was saying before in the first video, nobody with MS has the same symptomology we all differ but um in the, another video i'll go into more detail about all of my symptoms but for this particular video i just kind of want to give 
the symptoms that led to my diagnosis. Um, so, like I was saying, the first symptom was leg went left leg went numb, woke up. Um, and for those who know me personally, um, I was in the Air Force at the time. Um, I was enlisted, and so when you're enlisted and you're not married, you live in the dorms. So I was living in the dorms. Um, I was stationed in Peterson Air Force Base in uh, Colorado Springs, Colorado. And so I woke up as usual, um, about to get ready for um, a shift. Um, I was a shift worker at the time, and my leg was completely numb. Uh, well, I won't say completely numb. There was some feeling to it, but it felt like it had been asleep for quite a bit of time. And so I thought I had just slept on the leg wrong, or if anybody if you have been in the military, you know about those uh, atrocious green socks. Um, I usually didn't sleep in those socks, but it was mad cold because it was, uh, you know, September. If you've ever been to Colorado, it starts to get cold um, pretty quickly. So I was freezing, so I was like, these are the thickest socks I got, so I'm falling asleep in them. I don't care. And so they had rolled all the way down to my ankle and they were cuffed pretty tight. So I was like, this got to be the reason. So I massaged my leg and I was like, you know, the feeling to come back eventually. Well, I was wrong. Um, so that actually lasted for a good, I want to say two months. Um, it got so bad that I started to pop blood vessels um, in my legs because um, part of my conditioning um you know, I was required to run often, so we would do these uh, morale runs. So I would be running like three miles, um, or 3.2 miles, uh, excuse me, because we would do 5Ks. And we're running up hills and, and things like that. And I couldn't feel the pressure of my feet hitting the ground, so I, I'm assuming I was making really hard impact on the ground, you know, because I had no feeling in my left leg. So, um, I ended up popping a couple of blood vessels in my leg and my chief at the time was like, yo, you know, this is getting out of control, you know, this, I know you don't want to go to the doctor, Broxton, that's what they call me, um, and they were like, but you got to go to the doctor, it's an order, um, it's no longer an op up to you, it's not an option, I'm ordering you to go. So I stopped being stubborn, uh, went to the doctor, they did all of these tests, I think they did an ultrasound, some other tests, and they were like, well, we don't see anything, your blood flow is fine. Um, they did like a nerve conduction test, and they were like, well, you know, you, you haven't lost feeling, and I was like, no duh, which is why I didn't really want to go to the doctor in the first place, because of, you know, just the, the guinea pig kind of um, process that you have to go through, but I played along. Because, like I said, when you're in the military, if it's an order, you got to do what you got to do. So I um, ended up getting sent to a neurologist, and they prescribed me um, gabapentin. And the neurologist was like, after he did the nerve conduction test, he was like, you know, maybe you're taking too many vitamins, and you might have OD'd on the vitamins. And I was like, yeah, I have a lot of vitamins, but, you know, I don't ever take them religiously because first of all I hardly ever remember to take them um, I only take them when I think about it so I knew I wasn't taking too many vitamins so I knew it wasn't an OD type of situation um, but once again like I said I didn't really care for going to the doctor so I played along got the gabapentin um, I was thankful for that because it helped me sleep because in addition to the numbness um, I started to experience like tingling in both of my legs um, kind of like the restless leg syndrome and it was keeping me awake and you don't have to be in the military to understand what it's like to be a shift worker because prior to me being in the military I had done some shift work too so shift work jacks up your sleep <laughs> so I wasn't sleeping really well and um, so I was thankful for that because it you know took away that tingling in my leg and it allowed me to sleep so I want to say maybe a month or so after me taking that the feeling came back um, so at this time I was also um, preparing to transition from enlisted to a commission um, which is the process that um, you go through when you're becoming an officer if you have a uh, degree and a professional degree at that um, so I was 
going from my enlisted job to uh, my professional um, trade, which is clinical social work. And so I had to do a lot of things um, as far as my um, application was concerned. So I had to pass a PT test and um, I had to demonstrate that I was physically eligible. So I was panicked because I was like, man, you know, I hope nothing's wrong with me because I, I really want to make this transition. And um, so that was like the forefront of what was on my mind. I didn't really care about the leg being numb and everything. So, um, like I said, I ended up getting the feeling back in my leg. It took about a month or so. So a total of three months I dealt with that. Um, passed my PT test. Um, was able to pass the um, conditioning, physical conditioning. So I got the approval to go ahead and commission. So I was thankful to God for that because I was like, please. You know this is a dream it's a goal of mine gotta make this happen so um trying to think um so yes at this time there was no mention of multiple sclerosis um it was just kind of like a fluke thing going on with my um my leg and then um i end up commissioning i go to officer training and I started to experience this burning sensation in my leg as I was running. So now it's a whole new slew of issues starting to occur. Um, my leg is like on fire after running and I had never experienced this sensation before. Um, you know, it was like a burning sensation shooting down from my lower back all the way down to uh, my feet, both of my legs. And it was very agonizing but um you know one thing is perception in the military is a big thing so i didn't really want to complain about it because i didn't want to give off the perception excuse me perception that i was um trying to get out of taking my pt test or um you know that i wasn't in a good shape or um, condition to to compete with my peers so I just sucked it up, did what I had to do. So I ended up passing my PT test, but I did not do as well as I would normally do under um, different circumstances. But nonetheless, I passed. So that was pretty much my whole mentality throughout my training. Um, from the time I left Colorado and went to training, um, officer training school, I was like, whatever, bare minimum, as long as I do it, I'm happy. So. Um, while I was in training, I went to the doctor, complained about the burning, um, the pain in my lower back, and they were like, no, you know, we can't really treat you because you're a trainee, um, you know, wait till you get to your first duty station, you're as an officer, and I was like, really? <laughs> like, so I got to deal with this agonizing pain, and I was like, whatever, cool, um, I was like, hopefully I'll make it, um, I think I only had like a week and a half left by the time I went to the doctor so I was like I probably could could make it because the training was only five weeks long so I was like I, I just pray to God that I could make it now while I was in training I didn't know that another symptom that was going on with me was um, some cognitive stuff was going on but I wasn't aware um, I did not perform academically as well as I normally would I thought it was just the stress and the pressure of being at the training um, but I was just off, you know. I probably think that was just like the worst time I had experienced um, out of my whole uh, military career. Um, you know, I went through both uh, both trainings. I went through basic military training, and that wasn't even as bad as the officer training, and not because the officer training was harder. It was just I was going through so much emotionally and physically. I was just like, you know, this can't be real. It's got to be, you know, the universe is playing a trick on me and what have you so ended up getting through the training graduated um made my transition to my first duty station um which led me to the residency program um i had to take another pt test so i ended up doing a mock pt test um at this time my legs are still bothering me and now they're not only just burning and tingling they are getting weak like they're giving out on me at this time so now I'm scared because it's like okay so now I'm losing the strength in my legs so went to the doctor there complained about it um, they were like uh, we're gonna do some tests 
So they did some tests. Um, ultimately, they came back and said that I had early onset um, arthritis. And I was like, nah. <laughs> Uh, not because of my age, I was like, if I'm not mistaken, arthritis has to do with the bones. Um, this feels like nerve, you know, musculoskeletal pain, but I'm not a doctor. So I was like, hey, I'm going to respect your, your craft. I'm going to respect what you do. I didn't go to school. I'm not an MD. So, um, but in the back of my mind, I was questioning the process the whole time. But I was like, whatever it takes to get me some treatment. So I went to physical therapy for like three months and that did not help. Um, you know, I'm, at this time, I'm still taking the gabapentin to help me sleep. But then I started to um, go into a depression. Um, it wasn't like a, a deep rooted depression, but um, I found myself not wanting to leave my bed. Um, I was losing my appetite, just losing my love and fervor. For, for life you know and I don't mean like suicidal um, or just it was just like slowly slipping away from me my interest um, for things um, I'm an introvert naturally um, but I, I'm still a social introvert you know I love interacting with the, my loved ones and my friends who I'm close to and vibe with but um, even then I was just like no I don't want to do anything um, and it was a very hard time, you know, my husband, we weren't married at the time, but um, we were preparing to take that, that jump and, you know, he was extremely worried about me. And in another video later on, I'll have him come in and talk about him and how he felt during that process of me trying to figure out what was wrong with me. But it was just a weird, weird situation to be in because all of this stuff is going on and I don't know, I don't have any answers. And I was just... I was just flabbergasted because I didn't have any answers and you know typically I'm a healthy person always in high spirits able to find you know the positive I'm not like one of these you know just overly optimistic kind of people I'm a realist you know um, but at the same time I'm not like a Debbie Downer either and that was the disposition that I was starting to develop excuse me so um, I was starting to get worried, but I didn't really have a lot of time to think about stuff because I'm in the middle of this very rigorous uh, residency program, and I'm also in the military, active duty, so those two combined, it was like, you know, I don't have time for the war was me pity party, I gotta suck it up, do what I gotta do, and I have to perform because I'm expected to perform, I'm required to perform, so um, that was also my mentality at the time, so... I uh, just pushed through. It was very hard, you know, during the day I had to wear my game face and then I would go home and I'd be sad and just no motivation. And um, like I said, it was just slow, slow, uh, gradual, but it was definitely happening. So after I completed my physical therapy, um, it was just like, okay so I don't think this is arthritis but clearly I'm not gonna get the answers so you know screw it basically was my mentality I'm like you know I, I've been through worse things before um, I'm gonna pull myself up by my bootstraps literally and you know basically knock if you buck or whatever <laughs> you know whatever I had to say to get myself through I was like let's let's do this um, and I basically was trying to psych myself out. It really didn't work. Um, it worked to a degree. Um, I was able to still keep doing what I had to do. But then it just hit like a, a brick wall because um, the depression started to get worse. Um, the pain started to get worse. It started to affect my sleep. I wasn't sleeping. And like I said, I wasn't eating. So I was starting to lose weight. So it started to be visible. Um, and then you know, I wasn't able to perform, so I started to get on uh, waivers, and if you've never been in the military, if you are physically unable to perform your um, physical assessment test, you have to get on a, a waiver, and you have to go through um, a clearance for the waiver with your doctor, and so my doctor put me on a waiver because, you know, I'm complaining about the burning in my legs, the lower back pain, physical therapy is not working. And um, so a freak accident happened. I'm fast forwarding the story because 
this process went on for about a good, I want to say year and a half. Um, a freak accident happened. Um, I ended up getting injured during um, uh, unit PT. So unit PT is the, um, I want to say, uh, collective uh, physical workout with your you know, squadron or unit. And um, we were playing uh, ultimate football. And, um, you know, I had injured my f foot, my, um, my pinky toe, as we like to call it, or the fifth toe um, at the gym. I dropped a, um, a weight on my um, foot, and I'll come back to that because that's also an important um, tidbit. And so I tried to play, but I didn't realize how important the pinky toe is um, <laughs> for balance and stuff. So I wasn't able to play, so I decided to stand off to the side. Um, you know, one of my coworkers, um, I'm not going to say her, her name because we joke about this all the time and, um, my colleagues and coworkers, um, they've heard this story so many times. I'm not going to put her on blast because low key, I am grateful, you know, um, God used her as a vessel to get me to where I am right now. So, um, she ended up colliding with me trying to get the football and it's, <laughs> I got hit pretty hard, um, like a freaking Mack truck um, at full speed, sent me flying across the field. Um, my glasses came off my face. Um, I did like a, a roll out of the movies. Um, you know, at first, it was funny. Not funny in the sense that like, you know, ha ha, laughing at you. It was funny as in like, what the heck just happened? You know, everybody was in shock, like, dang, you know, some Chris Tucker, you got not the, you know, um, and so I was, you know, in shock, so I went from laughing to hysterical tears, not tears of pain, but, like, I was in such shock, so I got tears rolling down my eyes, I'm laughing, I'm stunned all at the same time, and then I was like, you know what, I gotta find my glasses because I can't see, so I'm looking for my glasses on the ground. I slowly get up, you know, I'm still in shock, adrenaline is, is, excuse me, adrenaline is going, you know, a thousand miles uh, per minute, and so at this time, I don't feel any effects or anything, but, you know, rewind, I'm still having back pain, I'm still having leg pain, but I'm not really complaining about it because I'm not seeing the results, so now, I'm not thinking about these things, you know, I just go on about my business, um, you know, I didn't feel anything, you know, I, as the day progressed, I felt a little sore, but that adrenaline was still high, but by the end of the day, baby, woo, <laughs> your girl was hurting, um, all capital letters, I was in pain, excruciating pain, um, so I started limping, um, <laughs> I, my whole body hurt, not just my lower butt back at this time, um, everything was hurting, so um, it was too late for me to go see the doctor, so I was like, I'm just going to go home, take me some, um, what did I take, a leave, because that's kind of like the only thing that works for me, um, so I took some leave, went to bed early, took me a, you know, a good hot shower, and was like, hopefully when I wake up in the morning, I'm not going to be in pain, well, the devil is a lie. Uh, woke up that morning. I was still in pain. My limp was real bad. You know, I it gave a whole new meaning to the stanky leg. I'm dragging my leg at this point. I'm limping. I get to work. My my coworkers are like, "Are you okay?" They was like, "Dang, you got messed up." I'm like, "Yes, I did." Um, my uh, supervisor at the time, she was overseeing me. Um, shout out to Captain Pass. Um, she was like, uh, you, are you sure you don't want to go to the doctor? Are you going to be able to, you know, perform today? I'm like, you know, yes, ma'am. Um, I'll be okay. Um, so I just go on with my duty for the day. And, um, <laughs> so part of my residency, you know, I would see patients and then I would have to do the documentation. So I ended up submitting her my documentation for the day and she would have to approve it and then sign off on me because although I was licensed at the time because if you're in residency you're working under the license of you know your supervisor and so um, she was like 
um, can I talk to you? And I'm nervous because I'm like, uh, yes, ma'am. <laughs> what did I do? What did I do wrong? And she was like, what happened? So she hadn't heard about the accident. And, but I think, you know, in passing, she started hearing, you know, a little bit about what took place. And I was like, well, you know, I had a little freak accident during PT. And she was like, uh, yeah. And she was like, um, I got hit pretty hard. And she was like, well, um, I'm looking at your, your work and it's not presenting like what you normally produce. And I'm worried about you. I think you need to go to the doctor. And she was like, but before you go to the doctor, I'm going to give you an ANAM. And the ANAM is a test um, for military um, individuals. Um, and you take a pretest and a post test um, to determine, um, you know, how you're performing cognitively um, in the event that when you deploy, if anything happens to you, they'll have a baseline to go off of um, to, to determine if anything happened to you as a result of you deploying. And so I took the test and um, she was like, so there's no pass or fail. And I already knew right there. I was like, this is not a good sign. She giving me a disclaimer. <laughs> and she was like, uh, but you basically performed uh, that of someone who is indicative of not having on um, a higher level degree and she was like you you do have a master's degree right I was like dang she asked me if I have a higher level degree so I know this is bad she was like yeah I think you have a concussion and you need to go to the doctor like now so once again I'm getting ordered to go to the doctor and so I, I end up getting an emergency appointment take the ANAM scores to the doctor um I kind of regret doing that um to date I um, wish I had just gone in there and talked to the doctor about what I was experiencing because I feel like um, I would have gotten um, a little bit better documentation um, and treatment as far as the doctor don't get me wrong was great but because I gave him the, the test results it kind of made his job easier he didn't have to do any work so he kind of just went off of my test results and was like yeah okay you have a concussion um, you know we're gonna give you um, now my brain is failing me, but um, I forgot what the little pass is called when when you're allowed to um, quarters. That's what it is, quarters. So he put me on quarters for like 48 hours. Um, but I think that was a Friday, so really I just got to leave early that day. And then I had the weekend to recover. So then my PCM, my primary care uh, physician, she was like, well, I'm going to be tracking you for the next two weeks just to see if, how you're covering. She's like, you can't use your cell phone, try to limit your um, digital, um, access to digital um, things for a while because, you know, it's going to really impact how quickly you, imp you heal and improve from the concussion. And I was like, okay, that's not going to be hard. Lies, that was very hard. Those who really know me know I hate being idle. So that was a struggle for me. Um, <laughs> so I would say I did 70% good and 30% not so good. Um, so I'm going to speed this up because I feel like this uh, explanation is taking a little too long. But I ultimately I did not recover um, as well as I should have from the uh, concussion. So that led to me getting an MRI and um, my MRI came back showing that I had uh, lesions in my brain um, and that I ended up getting diagnosed with white matter disease and so um, I was when I got the diagnosis, diagnosis excuse me I was like what the heck is white matter disease I'm like I had never heard of any of this stuff before and so I'm looking at my doctor and she was like you know she's professional but we also had a good rapport so she laughed at me because she she saw my face um but she wasn't laughing at the situation and she was like um you know it's when you have lesions you know in your brain and it shows up white in the imagery and I was like okay and how do you get that and she was like well that leads me to my next thing so she showed me a paper um with the clinical impression and it basically was like we have to rule you out for Lyme's disease um, a form of encephalitis and then multiple sclerosis was the last thing on the list um, and so I was like <laughs> my eyes were just wide and blinking like uh, what you talking about Willis 
<laughs> so she was like, yeah, so I'm going to be monitoring you for for however long it takes to rule you out for these things. Hopefully, you know, you don't have anything and it's just, you know, kind of a freak occurrence. So she was like, we're going to kind of hit the ground running. So she was like, you're going to get some labs, blood work, all of this stuff. Um, and then after that, I get the results back from one thing, it's going to lead to the other thing. So as you know, my blood work came back positive because that led me getting more tests. So I had a, a VAIR test, which is a vision test that you take to see if there's anything wrong with the, um, the nerve cells for your, your vision. That came back normal, um, but my blood work came back um, indicative of my immune system being over overactive. And then um, had another nerve conduction test that came back normal um, and then I had to have a spinal tap which scared me um, <laughs> because they had to stick this needle in, in my spine um, but I had a really great doctor um, and he alleviated you know my my nervousness so grateful to him um, that came back positive as well um, and so ultimately leading me to be diagnosed with uh, multiple sclerosis and um, also I forgot um, in addition to the uh, brain MRI I also had to have a full body MRI um, which included imagery of my spine and they found matching lesions in my spine so I have four lesions on my brain and four lesions on my spine and this is at that time um, so that's what led to my diagnosis in May uh, 2019 of multiple sclerosis and um, leading back to, like I said, MS is one of many autoimmune diseases. And so for me, that basically means that my um, immune system is overreactive. Some people's uh, immune system is underreactive. Mine is overreactive. So my cells um, are just off the chain, basically. And they are attacking the myelin sheath around my nerve cells. and. So for me, it affects my cognition um, and then the pain that I'm feeling in my lower back and the tingling and all that stuff that comes from, you know, the spinal um, lesions. Uh, since my diagnosis, I've had one, re one relapse to date um, and I had to have a follow-up MRI, my six-month follow-up, and it was discovered that I have two more lesions in my brain. Um, that are currently active now. They don't do the spinal um, MRI every um, time you get one, every six months. So I probably, I don't know when I'll have that next one, but um, so I don't know if I have new lesions on my spine, but I do have new lesions on my brain. And so, you know, I tell people when they're, they're asking me, those who do know already that I have multiple sclerosis, they're always asking me, you know, how are you doing? You are you okay? Um, I don't really have an answer for them because um, with MS, one day you could be good and one day not so good. So literally my answer to that is every day I'm fighting for my life, not in the sense of, you know, uh, death or living. Um, when I say I'm fighting for my life, it's in the sense of me, I'm not who I was health wise um, I'm not that person who can just get up out of bed and you know things are as, as normal as can be I, I don't have that life anymore so I'm fighting for normalcy as much as possible every day um, you know I don't have that that ability to just get up and go to the gym like I used to it really goes based off of how I feel you know um, I don't have that natural motivation anymore like I used to it really is based off of you know what's going on with me symptomatic symptomology wise and and my symptoms and um so it, it really is literally a fight for my life every day um you know I struggle with fatigue I struggle with pain chronic pain I struggle with uh, you know the emotional portion of it you know I am now consider it clinically depressed not because I'm sad but because the lesions in my brain have affected you know the hormonal balance and the neurotransmitters 
so it does affect my mood so I could be completely positive and I could be happy but you know um, it affects the my brain processes so um, like I said every day fight for my life um, and and I'm okay uh, at first it, it I was taken aback by the diagnosis and it was like I said it was very hard for me to sit down and process it because I was in the midst of going through training and everything and getting married and you know life was happening um, didn't have time to really sit and think and when I did get that time to sit and think um, <laughs> it was surreal it was like I'm living in a, a time warp you know I don't really know how I should feel about this um, I think the big thing for me was it's not a death sentence so cool um, I can still have children so you know I'm very grateful for that um, so I was like hey you know when life uh, gives you lemons you make lemonade um, and that's basically what my mindset was you know um, and I'm not just going to make some mediocre lemonade. I'm going to go and hustle and try to find me some sugar to add some flavor to that thing. So that's basically what I'm doing. You know, I'm doing whatever I can to get my little sugar and add some flavor to these these sour lemons that I've been, been handed. Um, and so that was the purpose of, you know, me really wanting to move forward with this channel. Um, I feel like this episode is a little bit longer um, because you needed to to get a little bit more insight into the diagnosis um, and as I come up with content um, like I said um, I'll go into more details about things and please um, if you did not watch my first uh, episode go back and watch that but I will put the information in this one um, I have created a gmail account for this channel ms3 sense s e n s e at gmail.com please send me your questions um comments uh if you have any questions about multiple sclerosis or autoimmune diseases like i said i can really only speak to my personal experience but if you have any questions i can at least do research or i can contact some people and get your questions answered because i am a part of you know a couple of different forums i'm uh, part of a couple of different groups and so, um, you know, there's a huge MS community out there. Um, so I'll try my best to answer them from my personal perspective. And if I don't have an answer, I'll try to get that, you know, answered or lead you to someone who can answer the question. But please, I really would like to get your feedback, your questions, um, comments. Uh, and like I said in the last video, you know, I felt led to also... Um, if you are going through anything or you want to share something um, based on my testimony um, you know I feel led to offer to pray for uh, for someone like I said I'm not you know super you know at intercessory prayer but I would like to get better so I'm offering that as well just to touch and agree with you and um, can't really think of anything else like I said this was a little bit lo longer of an episode I can't guarantee all the episodes would be this long but um I had a little bit more say this time and I think I touched on everything that I wanted to touch for this this episode and um I'm going to only be doing um two episodes a month for now it may increase but like I said um you know it's really going to be based on you know how I feel um, and then also the the reception that I get from the channel as well um, so thank you for tuning in uh, hit the like button uh, subscribe so that you can get the notifications when I'm posting um, and shout out to my little sister um, she did the intro and she created my logo um, she wants to be an editor so I hired her and gave her a little gig um, so her uh, professional name is uh sapphire mckenzie so um shout out to her i really appreciate her this is allowing us to bond and connect on her passion and so um love you little sis thank you for doing this for me um like subscribe um hit the bell 
so you get the notifications and um stay tuned and like i said i hope in best sense peace one love peace Thank you.